good morning. Um, today is a mobility flow, which means that we are not only stretching, but we're strengthening within that range of stretch as well. So expect some of the movements to be a little bit challenging in the sense that, you know, you'll feel them in your muscles. Um, but I've got options to either scale back or scale up, depending on where you are in your practice. So don't worry. Um, there'll be a couple of um, poses where a block might come in useful for you. It depends. Um, we've got some hamstring stretches. So if you find that um, you need blocks uh, to sit on or to, to reach the floor, that could be useful. There's also an arm balance a little later that if you struggle with, two blocks would help you. But if you don't have them, don't worry. As always, they're never necessary. You never have to have them. But we'll get going. We will start in a nice, comfortable, cross-legged seat, allowing yourself just to settle in for a moment. So allow your body to find stillness. Allow your eyes to close so that your face can soften. Allow everything to feel like it's just winding down slightly, feeling that sense of calm, that sense of focus. And then just bringing your attention to your breath as you watch it come in and out of the body. Use that focus on the breathing to encourage that sense of softness. Circle your arms wide and reach them high to the sky. And breathing out, lowering your hands to your belly, your chin to your chest and giving the back of the neck a nice stretch. So pull the chin down towards the body. Find lots of length there. And then allowing your eyes to open, your chin to lift, and just bring your feet onto the mat in front of you. We're going to come down onto our backs. So keep your feet firmly grounded, your arms to reach forward so that you can slowly roll down, starting to engage your core to control the body all the way down onto your back, your knees to hug in towards your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze, a little hug. Think of really drawing the thighs close to the belly as you pull your heels in towards your bum your shoulders root down against the floor as you feel your whole spine down against it. And then keep hold of just your right leg and send your left leg out onto the floor. Aim to keep it nice and straight. Back of the thigh squishes down. Hug this right leg in nice and close and really think of bringing your thigh and belly close together. Sandwich them in. We're then going to interlace around the back of the thigh, so releasing the, the lower leg. Keep that compression of thighs towards belly and flex your foot, toes towards shin. As you breathe in, press your heel to the sky, but don't allow that thigh and belly to come apart. So you should have found a big old hamstring stretch. You're pushing the heel up as the toes pull down, and maybe you can feel a little bit of a quiver and a little bit of a shake as your body fights its way into this shape. So use the upper body strength to keep pulling the leg in towards the torso and use the leg strength to keep kicking that heel to the sky. Quivers are very normal, that's okay. That means that your body is working for this pose. If this is too intense, you can always bend your left leg and put that foot onto the floor. Breathe in, keep pushing. Breathe out, keep pulling. Again, breathing in and breathing out. You're then going to release that grip, but keep the leg in the air. Push your heel tall, and again, if it's hard to stay up because of your hamstring strength, then uh, length, then bend your left leg. You're going to take your arms up and overhead. Interlace your hands and release your index finger into a little pointy stick. Breathe in, grow long. As you breathe out, take your arms to the outside of this right thigh. Reach through the fingertips, turn your chest in the same direction. Option to float your left foot as well if you'd like to make it harder. Gaze in the direction of your hands. Keep pulling your left shoulder over as you pull your chest towards your thigh. Keep reaching that right heel tall, breathing in to hold. Breathing out. Quivers are fine, like I said, with the hamstring stretch. Keep breathing. Keep holding. Take an inhale, and then as you exhale, let the limbs come back down. Give that right knee another squeeze in towards your chest and your left leg to stay extended. 
From here, shoulders to pin down against the mat. As you inhale, lift that left leg to the sky now. So your released leg, your left leg to the sky. As you exhale, lower it down, but don't let it touch the floor. Again, inhale to the sky. Exhale to lower, don't let it touch. If you want to make this harder, draw your shoulders off of the floor and look towards the front of your mat. Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower and to hover. If you still want to make it harder, let go of your right leg. Inhale, lift the leg. Exhale, lower and hover. Three more, inhale. Exhale. Last two, inhale, lift it up. Keep those shoulders rounding if you're lifting. Exhale, lower down, might be feeling it now. Last one, inhale, lift. And exhale to lower, releasing the legs. Release your right foot down to the mat and just give your body a moment to release out of that one. We're gonna switch sides, so your right leg is going to extend out onto the mat. Give your left leg a nice squeeze in towards the body. Knee towards chest, heel towards bum, really compressing the thigh and the belly close together. The interlace then goes around the back of the thigh, knee pulls in towards chest, giving it a nice tight squeeze, flex through the foot. Take a deep breath in as you press that heel to the sky. Find that length, that stretch in the back of the left thigh and use your strength in the arms to keep drawing the thigh towards the belly. Toes towards shin, heel towards the sky. Inhale. Exhale. Keep pushing guys, keep working for it. We'll take one more, breathe in. And as you breathe out, release your grip, but leave that leg in the sky as best you can. Option to bend that right leg if you need to. Arms go overhead, interlace the hands, release your little pointy stick. Inhale, grow long. Exhale, curl the body up, reach towards the left, both arms to the left of the thigh, gaze towards the hand. Option to float the right leg if you'd like to make it harder. Pull that right shoulder over towards the left side of the mat. Keep reaching through that left heel. Feels harder on this side because our core has already been working. Keep reaching through those fingertips. Take a deep breath in. And then as you breathe out, release yourself down. Give that left knee another squeeze in towards the body. You know the options this time if you'd like to make it harder. As you inhale, the right leg lifts tall. As you exhale, the leg lowers and it hovers. You could option to lift the shoulders, breathe in. And breathe out, keep reaching through the leg, keep it as straight as you can throughout. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, lowering. Last three, you might choose to make your last few a little harder. Inhale. Exhale, keep reaching, last two. Inhale. Exhale, and last one guys, keep going, breathe in and breathing out good release your legs down release your shoulders down and let your core have a little rest draw your knees in towards your chest give yourself a little squeeze and then see if you can find some momentum on your spine to roll yourself up to seated and into cross legs let's have the right shin in front so that we're all in the same side you can make the stretch a little deeper by wriggling your feet wider and moving your bum a little backwards if you wish if you need to as you inhale, reach your arms to the sky, palms face forwards. As you exhale, let yourself fold over the legs, hands to find the mat. Chin can fall towards the chest as you allow the body weight to pour towards your shins. Keep finding that length in the spine as you breathe in. Think of growing out towards the top of the mat. And you exhale to keep allowing that body to fold. Think of scooting your bum towards the back of the mat as you press your feet down into the floor. Great, last one, breathing in. And then breathing out, walk your way in. So I want you to bring your knees up nice and high and bring your feet a little closer together. So your legs are still crossed, it's still the right shin in front. We're going to see if we can not use our hands and not use momentum to rise up to stand as the legs un uncurl. So we need to reach our body weight forwards. We need to lean the weight. Keep your feet as close to your bum as you can. Lean your weight forwards. See if you can rise to stand 
As you then unravel your legs, you'll find yourself facing the back of the mat. Keep turning in the same direction and then come back to face forward. So now your left shin will be crossed in front. Make sure your left foot is staggered for further forwards than your right foot and see if you can start to lower back down towards cross legs. See if you can pause halfway down. So you've got to that point where your legs are really working. You're likely on the knife edge of your feet. Keep pressing the feet down into the mat and then see if you can very slowly, without sort of dropping yourself, place yourself down. Now, obviously you can use your hands. If you need to, that is just sort of an intention of trying to go handless. And then again, if you want to deepen the cross, wiggle the feet wider, wiggle the bum back, just an option. Inhale, lengthen tall. Exhale to fold forwards. Finding that length in the side body between the pelvis and the ribs. Think of lengthening that section of the torso. Your exhale, keep feeling heavy with the chest, folding towards the shin. Breathing in. Breathing out. And again, and then walk your way back in. So we'll do that one more time. It'll be the other way this time, as in you'll twist towards the right because your left shin is in front. So bring your feet nice and close to your bum. Your knees are nice and high. Lean your weight forwards in towards the balls of the feet. Press your way up to stand and then pivot your feet round. Keep turning in the same direction. Turn back to face the front of your mat and make sure your right foot is staggered further in front of your left foot. Bending both knees, keep your chest nice and tall. See if you can pause halfway down to the mat or maybe a little bit further than halfway, really where you feel that challenge into your legs. Pause and hold and then all the way back down onto your bums with perhaps a little plop. This time the legs are gonna come out in front of us um, not straight, but bent, reaching towards the front of the mat. With these bent knees, I want you to think of sandwiching your torso and your thighs together. So we've really um, prioritised this bit here, even if it means more bend in the legs. Squish those two together and reach forwards. Hold on to any part of your leg or your foot that you can find. It doesn't matter what it is. You can let your chin fall towards your chest. And from here, you're gonna keep those two body parts connected, belly and thighs. Now, depending on what surface you're on and how slippy it is, you can either let your bum walk backwards or you can let your heels slide forwards. Sticky mats tend to be a little bit easier to shuffle your bum. Keep the belly and thigh connected. And obviously only go as far as you can to keep those two bits squished together. We're lengthening our hamstrings, obviously, I'm sure you can feel that. And also lengthening the lower back using compression strength. So draw your core in, belly towards spine, to help keep the two body parts together. Give your heels a little press down against the mat. Keep lengthening your spine as you breathe in and folding against the leg. Give yourself a little pull against your own feet or your shins or whatever it is you're holding. Only going as far as you can keep that compression Last inhale. And as you exhale, walk your hands in until you're sat tall and then take your legs straight. Out in front of you, toes towards the sky, knees and toes all point upwards. Taking your hands alongside your hips, so right next to your pelvis, and then flex your toes as best you can, so much so that your heels might start to float. Press down into the hands and lift yourself, your torso nice and tall. So it's Dandasana, which is like, a, it's just a capital L shape with the body, but there's actually a lot going on. The legs are really working hard to keep those toes flexed back, and we're pulling the chest to the sky. If you struggle with the length of your hamstrings, your hands might need to be a little bit further back to help lever your body forwards into this L shape. Keep holding, breathe in, breathing out. It's harder work for your legs than it looks, so if you're feeling that, you're not the only one. Last inhale, and then exhale to soften and release. Maybe give your quads a little wiggle out. Keep those toes pulling back towards the body. Take a twist to look over your left shoulder. Your left hand can go behind you to help you keep nice and tall. Right hand onto the outside of the legs to give yourself a little push. Finding that rotation in the spine as you gaze over the left shoulder. Grow a little taller as you breathe in. 
and keep turning as you breathe out. Draw yourself back to centre and then straight to the other side. Right hand goes behind you, looking over that right shoulder. Use your left hand onto the leg to give yourself a little encouragement. Breathing in. And then breathing out back to centre. Make sure you have some space on the mat behind you, so maybe just scoot forwards. Again, we're going to try and do a no hands transi transition excuse me, to standing, but this time we're going to allow some momentum, unless you've got some superhuman abilities to stand from here. So allow yourself to roll back on your spine, find momentum to then roll forwards, push into your feet and see if you can find yourself to the top of the mat. Now, if the first attempt didn't quite work and you found yourself rolling back, give it a few goes. Get a bit more momentum each time. See if you can keep your legs close to your body and roll yourself up to stand. Feet to be together at the top of the mat, whether you made it this way or not. Arms released by your sides, chin lifts from the chest. Inhale, send your arms to the sky and gaze up towards them. As you exhale, forward fold, let your fingertips find the mat, bend your knees as much as you need to to touch down. Inhale, hands to your shins, chest lengthens forwards, tabletop, flat spine. Exhale, hands to the floor, feet are going to step back into plank, heels press out behind you, chest stays nice and broad. Inhale. On the exhale, drop your knees down, keep your tailbone strongly tucked under, elbows next to rib cage as you slowly lower all the way down to the mat. Fingertips come to the floor in front of your shoulders and a little wider than your shoulders. Keep your elbows nice and high so you've got big sort of right angles with your arms. Use an inhale, press into those fingertips, lift your chest, look forwards. Now pull your shoulder blades down your back and get your neck as long as you can. Exhale, release your chest down, leave your hands as they are. Inhale, roll the spine upwards, press down through the pelvis, squeeze your glutes. Exhale, roll yourself back. If you're struggling with the lift, take your hands further forwards. It's less um, range needed in your lower spine. Inhale, lifting through the chest. Squeeze those lower back muscles. Elbows pull in, shoulders pull down. Exhale to release. Last one, guys. Inhale, rippling up. Chest forwards, breathing into the belly. Breathing out to lower the chest back to the mat. Hands come back underneath the chest, tuck your toes under behind you, push via your knees, your elbows might crack if they're like mine, and then your hips to the sky and into down dog. Hopefully your hamstrings are already feeling like they've warmed into this, so perhaps you can find a stationary down dog straight away. Keep that soft bend in the knees, hips pressed to the sky, armpits open wide, long spine, long neck. Breathing in. Breathing out, breathing in, and breathing out. As you inhale, look forward to the top of the mat. If you like, you can walk. Otherwise, take a little hop. And when you land at the top of the mat, keep your hips as high as you can. So you land more in a forward fold than down into a squat. Hips stay high. Inhale, halfway lift. Chest forward, shoulders out of the ears. Exhale to fold, hands to the mat, soft, dangly head. Inhale, rising up to stand, tailbone tuck, reaching nice and tall. Same again as you exhale, fold forwards, find the mat, let your head hang freely. Inhale, the chest pulls forwards, the thighs press back. Exhale, hands to the mat, feet step back, plank pose. Breathing in, Breathe out, drop the knees, tailbone tucked, core stays strong, elbows pull in as you lower down to the mat. Fingertips, step a little forwards and a little wider. Inhale, ripple your chest tall, pull your shoulder blades down the mat, uh, down your back, your elbows do not need to be straight. Exhale, release. Two more, inhale. Exhale, feel your, sp your spine like a wave where it rolls its way up as you inhale and it releases its way down as you exhale. Hands back under the chest. Make your way back into down dog, hips high into the sky. Two breaths, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out. 
Same again, inhale, looking forwards. Remember, keep your hips high. Try to land in a forward fold. Lift the hips tall and land as softly as you can. Inhale, halfway rise, lengthen out your spine. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, coming all the way up to stand, arms alongside the ears, reaching and lengthening. And as you exhale, send those hands back to the mat as you fold against your legs. Inhale, halfway rise. This time as you exhale, place your hands down. We're going straight back into downward dog. Feet to the back of the mat, hips to go high to the sky and press those thighs backwards. With your inhale, send your right leg to the sky if you're three-legged dog and we're holding here. Think of your thighs spiraling in towards each other. Keep your pelvis facing the floor. The right leg is strong, lifting to the sky. Squeeze your right glutes. Arms stay strong. Press your chest back towards your legs. Keep lifting, keep lengthening. Inhale. And then exhale. Step that foot to the top of the mat. Get it between the hands and help it there if it needs. So we've got a nice long stride between the foot, the front foot and the back foot. Keep that nice and long. Front knee is going to lunge on top of the front ankle. Let your chest think of pulling forwards. Your back heel pushes back. Press your foot down. Interlace your hands and let them come to rest onto your thigh. We're going to do some movements here. There's the option to do it with your back knee down if you prefer. Keep your chest lifted, squeeze through your left glutes. We're on the ball of the back foot, that's not gonna change. Inhale, rise to stand, it's a balance pose. Straighten out the front leg, reach the arms overhead, keep that back heel pulling away from the floor. Use your exhale to sink back towards the lunge, knee on top of ankle, press the back heel away, hands to rest the thigh. Like I say, option, do it on the back knee. Inhale, front leg lengthens. Arms go overhead, squeeze that front quad, squeeze your rear glute. Exhale, sinking, driving the hips forwards and down. You should feel that a lot in your left hip flexor. Last one, inhale, rise to stand, reach those arms tall and exhale, sink your way back into that lunge. Good job, legs are working here. This time, rise your way up to stand, take your hands to your waist, turn your feet to face the left side of the mat, so you've come into a wide-legged stance. I'm just going to turn so that you can see me. From your wide-legged stance, let your heels turn inwards, so now your toes point outwards. Bending the knees in the direction of the toes, so we're coming into goddess. Take your hands to the inside of your thighs, push your knees wide. So the knees want to be out on top of the ankles, and we want to keep the weight into the little toe edge of the foot. So I want you to flex your toes, see if you can lift them off the mat, and then see if you can roll onto the little toe edge of your foot so that the, the balls of your feet start to lift. See if you can stay with that. Hands to stay nice and low down towards the knees. Lift the chest a little, breathe in. As you breathe out, drop your left shoulder towards the mat as you look over your right shoulder and keep driving those knees wider. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, drop the right shoulder, look over the left, push those knees wider. Inhale, center. Exhale, drop the left shoulder. Inhale, center. Last one. Exhale, drop the right shoulder, look over the left. Legs working hard. Inhale, center, and then straighten out those legs. Ooh. Turn the toes, now a little bit more inwards. So the outer of your feet match the outer of your mat. Squeeze hold of your quads, take your hands to your waist. Inhale, pull your chest to the sky, lengthen the front side of the body. And then exhale, think of your chest going forwards as you start to fold. Keep those quads squeezing, press your sit bones to the sky. Keep your spine as long as you can, so try not to round into the lower back. Pause before you round. You can then release your hands from your waist to come to hold the back of the calves, back of the ankles, or maybe the feet, depending on how far you've folded. And you can always give yourself a little pull, a little encouragement to deepen into that fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine. It's not about how low to the floor you get. It's about keeping your spine straight while stretching your hamstrings. Another inhale. And exhale. Take one more, breathe in. And breathing out. 
good. Releasing, taking your hands back to your waist. A soft bend into your knees with a strong inhale, rise all the way up to stand. Just make sure that your blood pressure has come with you before turning your feet back to face the front of the mat and stepping your back foot in. So from the top of the mat, I'm just rearranging guys, sorry, mine wiggles away. Feet are going to go wider than our hips and slightly pointing outwards. Not super, super wide. Make sure you're still on your mat. Point them a little outwards. We're going to sink down into an active squat. So hips go backwards, knees stay out with the toes, and then hands into prayer in front of the chest. Maybe see if you can keep sinking your hips low enough that your elbows are kind of in line with your knees and keep your chest lifted as you look forward. And we're really going to challenge our legs here. So let's see what we can do. We're going to take the right hand down to the floor in front of those right fingertips. There's always a block option if you have it. Inhale, left arm to the sky, but keep those hips sinking back. Stay strong in the legs, push down. We're going to transfer the weight towards the left foot and see if we can reach the right leg towards the back of the mat. Keep reaching the left fingertips to the sky. Bend into this standing left leg, really burns. Inhale, hold. Exhale, place that back foot down. Drop the knee to the floor and untuck the toes. Woo. Right, lizard lunge. Your front foot should be wider than your hands. Both hands on the inside and you can always step that back foot a little further back if you want. Keep the toes untucked, top of the foot onto the mat and maybe you have a little bit more flexibility where you can drop the right elbow, maybe you can drop the left elbow as well. Now keeping your back knee down, is a lovely option and you can stay with that. If you'd like to keep working a little harder, tuck the back toes under and lift the back knee. Keep your front knee squeezing in towards your left shoulder. Keep your chest pulling forwards towards the front of the mat and breathing here, finding that stretch. Breathe in and breathe out. Last one, inhale. And then if you lower down, let yourself come back up onto the hands. Your back foot is going to step in to mirror your front foot. Make sure your front foot is still quite wide. Mirror your front foot, and then we're going to sink low into the yogi squat. So the one that should feel more stretchy than it does like you're holding a squat. You can always stay onto the balls of your feet if your hip mobility struggles here. And you don't want to be holding this one. I don't want you burning your thighs here. So let yourself lift the heels if you need to. Elbows to drive those knees wider. Lift your chest. Long, tall spine. Hold for your inhale. And your exhale. Use your inhale. Press into the feet. Rise straight up to stand. Standing nice and tall towards the top of the mat. So we're going to try all of that on the other side. Mentally and physically prepare your legs. So feet a little wider than your hips. They can turn out ever so slightly. We're going to come down into that active squat. So hips push backwards. Knees stay nice and wide. Weight is towards the little toes. Hand in front of chest. Look forwards. Maybe your elbows are in line to tap your knees. Keep your hips as steady as you can here. Try not to move them. Left hand to the floor, kind of in front of the left toes, roughly somewhere on the left side. Right arm, inhale to the sky. Turn that chest, take the gaze with you if your balance is there and keep your hips sinking low. Now transfer your weight towards your right leg. Shift the weight to that leg. Left leg can then reach to the back of the mat. Keep it as straight as you can. Point through the toes. Keep bending into this front right leg. Keep turning the chest to face those top fingertips. Breathe in, guys. Hold. We can do this. And then breathe out. Place the foot down. Place the knee down, even if just for a moment. And find yourself into your lizard lunge. So both hands inside the leg. Option to have the back knee lifted if you're still going for it. Otherwise, leave it down and give yourself a moment to recover. Option to drop the elbow, option to drop both, as long as that's comfortable for you and as long as you can do so without this knee needing to fall away. Keep the knee pulling in, press down into the big toe side of your front foot. So 
Sorry if my glugging water is loud down my microphone. Last nice deep breath in and a slow breath out. Good. Now, instead of stepping forwards this time, I want you just to swipe your knee back to come to kneel as we're going to work into a, a small, I say a small, not small, uh, an arm balance here. So that was our lizard pose and we're going to try flying lizard. So hopefully we're feeling well prepared and I'll quickly guide you through it. If you know it, go ahead, give it your, give it your best shot. So I'm going to show you on the right side first. We're going to step the right foot forwards as if we've come back into lizard where the body is on the inside of the thigh. Now this front foot, I'm going to wiggle it a little bit more towards the center of the mat and my right hand, I'm going to bury my arm under the thigh and place my hand outside the heel. My left hand matches, so my hands look like I was doing a plank. My back toes tuck under and this is where it gets tricky. My front foot needs to lift and as you lift it, you need to think of sending it towards the left side of the mat so your shin would become diagonal. To find that lift, you need to broaden between your shoulder blades, push down into your arms and then as you find the lift, you've got to send your chest forwards, bend into the elbows. Now if you've got to this point, keep sending the chest forwards and your back knee might be able to bend for the foot to leave the floor. Now, I'm almost sure that if you're struggling, it's because you're struggling to lift that front foot off of the mat. One way that we can compensate and work on being able to find this arm balance without that flexibility is to use your blocks. So in exactly the same way, when you come to set up, place your hands onto the blocks instead. Suddenly, your arms are that little bit longer, so this leg can lift up a little easier. Clamp hold of that right tricep, send your chest forwards and see if that back leg can leave the floor. Oh, it's hard work, as you can probably hear from my breath. One thing to really think of your flying lizard is going forwards and down. Your head and your face and your chest are very, very close to the floor when you're in this balance. So if I show you one more time, as we come forwards, see how close to the floor my nose is. So give it a go on the right side and see how it feels. And then we're gonna switch and give it a go on the left. So make sure you've got your breath back. Your left foot then comes to the top of the mat. Hands to the inside. I'll guide you through it because I know it can feel quite confusing of where are the limbs going. Wiggle the left foot a little bit more towards the center of the mat. Left arm buries under the thigh and places at the left side of the mat. Hands look like a plank. Lift the back knee and make sure that foot is not too far away from you. Wiggle it a little further in if you need to. Broad shoulder blades, puff up your back. And as you pull this foot up towards the right side of your mat, go forwards. That back leg is then a little bit like a scale. It may or may not lift. A couple of things to really think about is that the leg around the arm is really clamping. It's holding on very, very tightly. And you've got to think of yourself as a counterbalance. If this back leg is not lifting, then you need more weight at the front of the mat. So you need to keep leaning forwards and aiming the body slightly downwards to help that back leg lift. Once you've given it a couple of goes, and you may or may not have found success, allow yourself to come back to child's pose. So knees wider than hips, big toes together, sit onto the heels, and then walk those hands away and allow your forehead to rest to the floor. Give yourself a moment to reconnect to the breath because breathing as we're doing those postures is often the first thing that flies out the window particularly if you're trying to talk through it as well. Breathe in, send it deep down into the belly. Breathing out. Again, breathe in. And breathe out. Good. Then pushing yourself up towards tabletop. Just let your knees come more narrow so they're coming to hip distance apart. Your toes can stay tucked under. Keep your pelvis right here on top of your knees and then your hands to walk away from you. Out beyond the top of the mat into puppy pose. Your forehead can rest to the floor if that's there for you. Maybe use a block if it's not. And we only want the palms and the forehead on the floor. So the forearms and the elbows stay lifted. Think of your, your armpits lifting away from the mat. 
If perhaps you have a larger range to work with here, you can lift your gaze and look forwards and let your chest come to rest to the floor. That would only be an option if when your head is on the floor, you're really not feeling any stretch or sensation at all. So try not to push yourself too far. Our shoulders are very sensitive little things. And breathe in deep down into the lungs, widen the chest. Breathing out. Again, inhale and exhale. Take your last breath in and then walk your hands in all the way to the top of the mat or back of the mat, excuse me, should I say, until you're stacked tall onto your knees. So knees are still hip distance apart, and we're going to keep those toes tucked under behind us so the heels are nicely lifted. We're going to move in to camel pose. I want you to think of a nice strong core, brace hold of your abs. Now tuck your tailbone under so you squeeze your glutes and you're going to flatten out this front part of the body here. Hands come to your rib cage, just below your ribs. Take a deep breath in and feel like you're lifting your rib cage to the sky. Take your gaze to the sky as well. On the exhale, keep pushing your hips forward, squeeze your bum and let your chest turn to face the sky. If you feel supported and okay here, you might want to release your hands to rest onto those heels as you keep those hips forward. So we don't want to lean back with the pelvis. We want the pelvis forwards, the chest to the sky. And you can always let your head drop back, chin away from the chest, but it's impossible for me to talk there, so I will not. Keep broadening across your chest, narrowing through your shoulder blades. Inhale into the front of the body, expand into your belly. Breathing out, stay soft. One last breath. Good, use a strong inhale. Lift your chest all the way back up tall. Make sure you don't feel dizzy, just untuck your toes. Sit yourself onto your heels and maybe just take a moment to make sure that you feel normal back the right way up. It's a big, intense back bend. Let your knees step together, still sat onto your shins. Your left hand to reach behind to hold onto your feet or just rest to the floor. Right hand to the outer of the thigh. Just give yourself a gentle twist just to ease ourselves out of that camel pose and let everything come back to centre. And then straight to the other side, right hand behind you, option to hold the feet. Give yourself a little pull in the other direction. And then coming back to centre, moving into rabbit pose, we're going to hold on to our own heels, so it'll become easier as we fold down. Think of your belly coming down towards your thighs, and then chin strongly tucks under towards the chest, so that the very top of the head comes to the floor. It's not our forehead like it is for child's pose, it's more towards the top of the head. Keep hold of the heels, nice and firm grip, and now lift your bum away from your heels, so you roll onto the very roof of your head. As you pull against your own heels, feel your upper back broaden. That's where we're focusing the stretch. Pull against those heels. There's not too much weight into the head. It's more of a brace against your feet to broaden that space between your shoulder blades. Breathe into the back body. Breathing out. One more. And then sit your bum back down as you breathe out. Roll your body all the way up, hands onto the mat in front of you. Walk your way to the top of the mat, your knees can stay down. As before in the sun salutes, tuck that tailbone under, elbows close to the chest as you lower yourself down all the way to the floor. And then propping the body up onto elbows. So sphinx pose, elbows under the shoulders, palms face the floor, chest pulls forwards, and then press your hips down into the mat reach your toes out backwards and feel like you're pulling the mat back towards you. Elbows pull back towards hips, squeeze the muscles of the lower back as you broaden across your chest. Inhale here, strengthening into that lower back, breathing out. Again, breathe in and breathing out. And then bending that right knee 
Your left arm is going to stay supporting you. You can take it onto a diagonal if you wish. Right hand to go find that foot for your half frog. Give the foot a little pull in towards your bum and then turn your chest back to face forwards. There's no twist in the body here. Keep pressing down through the front side of the right hip as you squeeze your right glutes. So it's a very big stretch into the quad, but also into the psoas, the hip flexor, which is the muscle that attaches the leg to the torso. You'll get more into there the more that you compress that pelvis into the floor. Keep your chest lifted, breathe in and breathe out. Last inhale. And then release the foot gently as we come to the other side. Right arm for your support, bend the left leg. Hold the foot in whichever way you like. I tend to come to hook it around my forearm just because that's where it works for my flexibility. But don't be too concerned with how you're holding it. Just take hold. Give it a pull towards your bum, but then the important part is that press down into the left side of the pelvis. Squeeze your left glutes. Lift your chest, look forwards. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Great, letting that foot go. Taking your knees a little bit wider towards the edges of the mat. Press your way back up towards your knees. Cross your ankles behind you and then see if you can roll your way back so you're sat towards the back of the mat. If that doesn't work, just turn yourself around so you're seated. Shuffle yourself forward so you have space on the mat behind you. Arms reach forwards and just like we started, roll yourself down. A little bit at a time. Try not to release and let go at any point. Roll your way all the way down to the mat. From there, you can hug your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a nice little squeeze, compress. And then stepping your feet back to the mat. Reach your arms overhead, extend your legs, point your toes and grow as long as you can through the whole body. Pull the fingertips towards the top of the mat, reach the, thing, the tippy toes to the bottom. Take one last deep breath in, and then as you exhale, release. Let your arms come alongside the body. Maybe step your legs a little wider so you can really feel that softness in the hips, that heaviness in the feet. Closing your eyes. Allowing everything to slow down. Taking this well-deserved rest. Now the body has nothing it needs to do. Feel your heart rate slow. And your breath shallow. As you feel the body be supported down against the mat. And then taking another deep breath in to reawaken. Maybe letting those arms go back overhead to find movement in your limbs. And then hugging your knees into your chest to give yourself a little squeeze. Maybe a congratulatory hug. Softly allow yourself to roll up to seated. Finding that tall, long spine. And then with your final inhale, circle your arms wide into the sky. And your final exhale to lower your hands to your belly and your chin to your chest. Well done, guys, for getting yourself through what is, was quite a challenging class. I'm sure, you know, when my legs feel it when I'm teaching, I'm sure many of you are feeling it perhaps even more than I am. Um, 
So things like that, are, it's a great sort of class to build that mobility, so it's strength in your flexibility, which you know is the best way to avoid injury and keep us strong and mobile. Hopefully you can join me again for another class soon, or you can check out all the other classes that I have already on my channel. If you are able to donate anything to the class, I very much appreciate the support to help me through these times where teaching out and about just isn't possible. Um, and if you have any questions or any comments about the class, what you liked, what you didn't like, then let me know in the chat box just below or just beside this video screen. Hope I will virtually see you again soon.